Hey guys, I'm Daniel Richter, CEO of StrengthLog and Certified Strength Coach. Today I thought I would talk about the topic of building muscle and losing fat at the same time, and I thought I would try and demystify this a bit, as it is sometimes seen as something of a unicorn or almost fairy tale or pipe dream, whatever you want, when in reality this is something that happens all the time. If you take a group of people and you put them on a strength training program and you tell them not to change anything about their diet or their sleeping habits or stressors or anything, you just add strength training to them, the expected outcome and what we see in a ton of studies is that they will build muscle and lose fat over the course of a few months of strength training. We see it all the time. And now a lot of you is going to say, yeah, in beginners, right? But what about trained people? It doesn't happen if you have resistant training experience. But we see this in trained populations as well. There are many examples. Here's one study with a group of trained women. They were aspiring fitness athletes. Uh, and they were split into two groups, one high protein group eating two and a half grams of protein per kilo per day and a low protein group eating 0.9 grams of protein per kilo per day. They trained for eight weeks doing two upper and two lower body workouts per week. And as you can see in these results, they increased their fat free mass and decreased their fat mass. Both groups did so, but the high protein group gained more fat free mass and lost more fat mass than the low protein group. And here's the cool thing, the high protein group, they actually ate 400 calories more per day and still lost more fat than the low protein group. That's pretty cool. So that's just one out of several examples on a trained population gaining fat free mass and losing fat mass at the same time in the same training program or time period. The main difference with a trained population is that the magnitudes of change is much smaller, at least for muscle, because when you've trained for a long time and you're closer to that ceiling of your maximum muscular potential, changes in muscle are smaller no matter which intervention you do. If you change the training or protein intake or give them, I don't know, steroids or whatever, every change in muscle mass is going to be smaller for a trained population. Changes in fat mass, however, tend to be the same between beginners and experienced trainees. If anything, someone with resistance training experience might be able to lose fat even faster because of better discipline and adherence. But muscle growth and fat mass happen simultaneously in both types of groups. And to understand this concept, you need to understand the underlying mechanisms. When it comes to fat gain or fat loss or your fat balance, so to say, you can pretty much only influence it by one factor, and that is your caloric balance. So if you are in a caloric surplus, you're going to gain fat. And if you are in a caloric deficit, you're going to lose fat in general. But what about your muscle growth? To be more specific, your muscle protein synthesis, that is the building of new muscle protein. Well, some of the bigger ways in which you can increase your muscle protein synthesis is by strength training. Very powerful way to increase your muscle protein synthesis. It's elevated for up to several days after a workout. You can increase muscle protein synthesis from eating more protein. Also a very potent way to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Eat more protein and you'll build more muscle. And then finally, your caloric balance. If you eat in a caloric surplus, you are going to increase your muscle protein synthesis and build some muscle. And vice versa, if you decrease your calorie intake, if you're in a caloric deficit, you're going to lower your muscle protein synthesis. On a common weight loss diet, you might see decreases of around 30% in your muscle protein synthesis. So only one of these variables overlap, and that is the caloric balance, which means that if you can increase your muscle protein synthesis more from strength training and your protein intake than what your caloric deficit is decreasing it, you are going to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. They are separate processes that do intersect, but only a little and not completely. And this is why I tend to recommend that if you're happy with your body weight, like the number of your body weight, but you'd like to be more lean and more muscular, I recommend that you eat in a caloric maintenance and just strength train hard and eat a lot of protein. That way, you'll gradually build more muscle and lose more fat while staying at that same weight. I personally don't see the benefit of doing a bulk and a cut cycle when your goal is to get back to that same weight but with a better body composition. I think that any benefit you get during a bulking cycle would be offset by the negatives from a cutting cycle. Besides, even if you do think that you have to go through bulking and cutting cycles, well, you are actually doing that on any given day, even during maintenance. The hours after a meal, you're going to be in a surplus, you're bulking. And when you've been fasting for a few hours, you're going to be in a deficit, so you're cutting. So bulking and cutting on a longer scale is really just lengthening these phases. But I don't know if one is better than the other, and as far as I know, it hasn't really been examined either. Both approaches seem to work just fine, so do whichever you prefer. And the maintenance method is more my personal preference. 
And this has, by the way, happened to me on several occasions when I've been training harder and making sure I get all my protein in. I can see in those periods when I take some body measurements that my arm circumference and my thigh circumference, they might increase while my waistline decreases and my body weight goes down, but still my arms and legs grow bigger and I can increase my lifts. As another anecdote and example. So bulking and cutting definitely works. Staying in a caloric maintenance while keeping your protein intake high and training hard also works. And one of the best ways to make sure that you train hard is to use our app Strength Log, which is completely free and has no ads. You track your workouts, then the next time you go to the gym, you look at what you did last time and try to beat that. And there is a premium subscription if you want more features or if you want to follow one of our premium programs. But all your basic needs are met in the free version. Anyway, I hope you learned something about building muscle and losing fat at the same time. I hope you give our app a shot and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Train hard, eat well, die anyway.